Good morning, everybody. Uh, two weeks ago, I was offered a job, a short job, 15 minutes. That's happening right now. And the job uh, had a title, uh, Help People Build a Strategy for a Job Search Outside Academia. Sorry? It's not on? Is this better? Yeah. All right. Two weeks ago, I was offered a job. Great opportunity. I'm trying to catch up with time here. Uh, to tell you about a job strategy outside of academia. Right now, I'm just a job candidate. If reality were rational, I shouldn't be here. Why? Because I've never looked for a job in my life. I never got a job. Well, I did get a job once and it worked out so, so. So I'm not the right candidate. And then I have to talk to about 200 people. And I'm an introvert. I'm the wrong candidate. And strategy? I'm not a strategist. I'm the wrong candidate. And yet, here I am in front of you because I accepted that job 15 minutes. So the first thing I did, I said, well, what the hell does it mean? So my first hint to all of you is the meaning of words. Strategy comes from strategia. I don't know how you pronounce it in Greek. It's nothing rational. It's the art of the general. So I said, OK, well, well, how do I go about it rationally? So, so, so I decided to run a little experiment. Everybody is a scientist here. So my experiment has a very special design. First, there is an introduction. Then there's materials and methods. Then there's results. Then there's discussion. Then there is references. Are we inside our comfort zone here? We should be. So. Uh, Experiment means, uh, well, first of all, there is an introduction. So what is it that I do? I do have a PhD, and like some people in this room, I became a defrocked biologist and did something else. Uh, that happened many years ago, and uh, it was painful and lonely and difficult, and by and large, unsuccessful. It was like that. And I ended uh, becoming a, a teacher for people who uh, work in life sciences but are not biologists. So what I do most of the time is uh, crash courses teaching the essentials to non-biologists working in life sciences. I've been doing this for 10 years, about 200 different companies, uh, small ones, some big ones, in particular one that was just mentioned 12, 12 minutes ago. And uh, by doing that, I actually met some people that could be your future recruiter or employer. All kinds of people. So maybe I can transfer something useful for you here. Uh, the other thing I started doing four years ago is, is, is teaching biology for sustainable business practices in a small business school, private business school in Lausanne, business school Lausanne. And, uh, my students are business students, and they all go, well, we're here to make money because we're going to be business leaders. We don't care about biology. But they may end up in uh, biotech. So perhaps these people uh, are some of your future colleagues. So uh, that's the introduction. Uh, uh, the other thing I have to say uh, about introduction is that if you are not sure yet you should be. Your skills are incredibly useful. To do science, I hope you're convinced of that, but to do anything else. And the list can be quite long, so here's just a little, uh, little uh, example, uh, just pointing out two very important things. Scientific method is not about science, it's just a name. It can apply to any situation in life. That's very useful. That's what I tell my business students. 
And the other thing is Bayesian reasoning versus common sense. If you don't know what Bayesian reasoning is, study it, get it. It will be easy because you, you, know, you are a scientist. It can make a hell of a difference. These skills are incredibly useful outside of science. So are the other ones. But this is not strategy, Vanya. So, the experiment materials, I reached out to recruiters on LinkedIn. And the method was to ask them a few questions. And the questions I asked, that was a couple weeks ago, is given equal science qualifications, that's all the future job candidates in this room, which positive characteristics will make you or you get that dream job? Conversely, which negative characteristics would make me a loser? These were open questions, and then uh, uh, I asked them to rate the importance of different attributes. These are pretty obvious. Things like motivation, commitment, curiosity, vulnerability and limitations, that's being authentic, and communication skills. And the results were interesting, uh, perhaps more interesting than what meets the eye. The first thing, the highest score is motivation and commitment. Oh, surprise. The key question here is, how do you communicate motivation and commitment in your first job interview? The second variable was about communication skills. And uh, the key question here is, how do you actually communicate science or non-science effectively? The third thing that came out as a third place winner was about curiosity, asking questions, listening. How do you communicate curiosity to someone? Uh, last but not least, of course, is leadership skills. And uh, here what was interesting is that uh, it was particularly on the negative side of the things. In other words, if you don't act as a potential leader, that's a killer. The key question is, how do you come across as a future leader, especially if you are a young scientist, especially if you are an introvert, like I am an introvert, if you are scared, stressed, whatever the feelings are. And there were some subjective criteria. So uh, someone said, well, interesting personality. That's very important. And this other recruiter, these are real recruiters, by the way, said, well, blue eyes. OK, I, I happen to know that person, so, so I see where he's coming from. OK. So how do you communicate that you're interesting, and how do you communicate that you have blue eyes if you want to be hired by that guy? These are not easy questions. These are data, and data is always data. 14 people, not very much, but these are actual recruiters uh, or, or headhunters, so they're for real. The good news is that a few of them said, you know, we're looking for people. So if you, if you find, oh, I see that person over there, uh, come and talk to me because I, there may be a job for you there. So uh, I think, and I hope you agree, that your strategy is above all a communication strategy. The general Einstein said it when he was alive, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well. So simplicity is key. I think that's an obvious one. But of course, there is more to this. Because just saying, I'm very motivated and committed, or just saying, I'm interesting, or just saying, I have blue eyes, is not going to do the trick, especially if you have brown eyes. Okay. Well, uh, beyond the joke, there's something very important here, is that getting a job is a fiction. Novartis is a fiction. You cannot touch Novartis. It's not like a rock. 
So whatever you do is about sharing a reality which doesn't really exist, and that reality has to somehow become real. How do we go about it? Well, we're not the only ones that communicate. Other animals communicate really for real and really well, better than us in many ways. They don't have words. So there is no confusion about meaning. It's simpler. For us, we do have words, and that's the tragedy and the wonderful thing about being a human and not an ant, I guess. We have two options. Either you transfer information, like a phone book, and a phone book is not that different from a CV because these are facts. Or option B is you tell a story. And telling a story is way more powerful than a CV. You can do anything. You can start World War II with this. You can become Harry Potter. Or you can be Dalai Lama. Anything is possible. It's a fiction. It works. So uh, you've all heard the word storytelling, all of this. I'm not going to go too much into this. I'll just, I'll just uh, uh, touch upon what I think are the essentials. If you can tell a good story, it's a good communication strategy. So what's a story? It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It has a plot. It has punchlines. That's very important. And each punchline, now here are the punchlines. I wish I had blue eyes. May sound strange, but in the story it may make sense. And each punchline has to have emotions that come alive. Otherwise, it's not a punchline. It's a failed punchline. And those emotions have to be shared in a safe manner so that everybody's comfortable. So there are techniques to get that going, to make this happen. But basically, here is a simple scheme. If this is you, you have a brain. You're very smart. You're scientists. You have PhDs or whatever other degrees you're going to get. And then there's the rest of you. And the rest of you is challenging. Why? Because adrenaline, because all kinds of things happen when you have to sell something, convince somebody of something you're not sure. Your thoughts and your physiological states, whatever those may be. And they are different worlds. Feelings are not thoughts. Feelings are much more complicated. I think there are people in the, audiences, in the audience here that know much more about this than I do. So there is stress, always. You can't get rid of it. And stress, really, ultimately, is about adrenaline and what do you make out of the ATP you, 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 you generate. And biologically, it's fight, flight, or freeze. But that's not a good plan for a job interview. Underneath, you have emotions, feelings. This is complicated, but you have basic emotional states. You can be angry because you didn't get that last job. You can be sad because you wish you had. You can be scared of the next interview. Right now, I'm scared of being here because it's all here. You can be indifferent. It's like, well, what the hell? You know, so what? can be curious, can be joyful, or a mix of anything. That's what makes a story a good story. Now, the interesting part, and actors know that, and other people have discovered that, is that emotional states can be created and mastered at will. It's an exercise. To do that, you have to align all of your communication tools with the purpose of making that punchline work. Hire me. How to do that? There are different techniques. But it's all about nonverbal language. Emotions emerge in your body through gestures. 
So it's just like dancing, reverse engineering works. If you want to be a good dancer, you have to practice. There are all kinds of methods and techniques. We have one, but we're certainly not the only ones that have that exercise toolkit so that if you want to communicate motivation and commitment, ask your body. Your body knows the answer. If you want to communicate curiosity, ask your body. If you want to communicate science effectively, science is fun. If you want to communicate that you will be a future leader, be the future leader. And if you want to communicate interest and blue eyes, just make a fiction. You may not see it, but my eyes used to be blue until the age of four. And that's actually true. So uh, if you need help to let your body answer these questions through practice, uh, Samuel Lagier uh, is running workshops that connect to that. You know, he'll speak at the end of the day. Uh, we also do uh, trainings on these exercises. And at the end of the day, either you get the job or you don't. Uh, well, my job here is finished, so thank you for your attention. Thank you.